Hi guys, Matt here. Um, I'm going to show you how to do some light weathering on tanks today. It's a, a real easy method. It'll only take about half an hour real time. The video's a bit sped up. Uh, we're going to use Warn Effects from AK Interactive. All products that I use in this tutorial, I'll link in the description below. Um, we're going to use this old Chaos Rhino that we dug up from the depths. It's a bit battered, but hey, that's kind of what we want for the look. This is only a light weathering effect. I, I will, throughout the, the, the video, tell you kind of how to change this technique up if you want more of a rugged, rough weathering effect. It's worth mentioning first that the tank is undercoated with Chaos Black Spray. And without further introduction, let's go into our first step, which is an all-over coat of Gunmetal Grey from Vallejo Metal Colour. If you were looking for a more rusted or decayed effect, you might use like a, a, a whole red from, I think, Model Air do a real good whole red. Or just something rustier. I'm trying to get a shine to mine. I want chips as well as rust. So I'm starting with Gunmetal Grey. Just make sure that you've got a, a full coverage of, of this Gunmetal Grey. You, you want it to be all over the model. Nothing, nothing technical, nothing fancy. You, you're just spraying the model. Okay guys, once the uh, coat of Gunmetal Grey is dry, we're going to move on to a highlight of Metal Colour Silver. Which is, it's a real high silver and it works really well for this metal highlight. Um, you're only going to be spraying towards the top of the tank. Just kind of watch where I'm spraying. Uh, and just just follow that really. It's, it's not a difficult thing to do. Just make sure that you do only hit the top of the tank. We're, we're, we're looking for this to be at the highest point of the tank when we chip away. We don't want any real high silvers towards the bottom because that's where we get, we're going to put some rust. If you were doing this with a more weathered, aggressive look in mind, we would have started with the whole red like we mentioned before. And then maybe this is where you would start doing your rust spots instead of the silver highlight. Just make sure this step's fully dry. Uh, before you move on to the next step because you don't want them to be blending into each other. Right guys, the next step is the rust on the tank and it's going to go around the skirt of the tank uh, and bloom around the back. You want to spray in patterns that you th you th where you think the rust would accumulate on a tank. Um, for the start of this we're using Light Rust by Vallejo Model Air. Um, pretty simple step, just just follow my lead. You don't want this to be too thick, it, it's just a dusting with more concentrated towards the middle of the colour. Maybe just hit a few other details of the tank, like on the top I'm going to do the hinges. Um, if you were doing something more in depth you might want to do around the middle of the doors and, and anything that's an edge that meets the outside world. I also like to hit... Um, a few random patches of rust, just just for effect. Uh, pick anywhere. Not too heavy though. Right guys, next we're going to use Model Air Orange Rust. And this is a, a higher rust colour and it's only really to like bring out the rust we've already done. So we're going to hit the same places. Uh, not all of it, just patches. And it's just to bring out a higher colour of rust. Rather than it all be that, that dull brownie red that we've got. We want some a vibrant orange. Uh, chances are, because this is such a light weathering effect, a lot of this rust won't come through anyway, so it, you can be a bit happenstance with it, but still, stick to the plan. Hit the hinges and the random rust part you did again, just because it can't hurt to have two different colours around there. It, it will just add to the effect in the end. Just make sure that step dries now before we do the next one, because the next thing we're going to do is add... Um, a gloss varnish, we're going to be using Vallejo gloss varnish for this. Um, I found that it's not the best varnish to use for this. I might tend to go towards GW's uh, hard, hard coat. I, I, I find that gives you a much more rugged finish and it can last to, it, it, it can survive what we're going to do to it a bit better. So that's Vallejo gloss varnish we're adding next. Uh, undiluted.
it's important that this is left to fully dry before we do the next step otherwise it, it'll all go to pot so make sure it's all dry with the gloss varnish fully dry we're going to move on to the worn effects liquid now and use this straight from the bottle into the airbrush itself um, the more coats of it you use the more severe the weathering will be and also the less drying time you give it the more severe the weathering will be As I'm looking for a, a not very severe weathering effect, I'm just going to do two coats and let it completely dry before I start putting on the next layer of paint. The next step is to gather the colours you're going to use and we're going to spray them onto the model obviously starting the same way we did the, the silver from lowest to highest in, in brightness. The first colour I'll be using is an all over coat of Model Air Blue Grey from Vallejo. Just make sure all the under parts of the model are covered as well because you kind of want this to be your shade colour. Next colour we're going to use is Magic Blue and that's a Game Air paint from Vallejo and this is going to be like the silver was, a highlight colour so we're going to aim towards the top of the tank and kind of get the middle of the tank. Just make sure that you've got a nice coverage over the top of the tank and I think we can move on from this colour. And finally I made a bit of a, a my own mix for the highlight because I wanted it to be a turquoise so I mixed uh, Game Air Electric Blue with Games Workshop's Araman Blue and it, it's come out quite nice. I had to put quite a bit of thinner in it because the Games Workshop paint uses quite a thick pigment but uh, it's just like a turquoise highlight and we're aiming this directly towards the top of the tank and nowhere else.
And with the final turquoise highlight done, we can now move on to the, the actual weathering itself. Pretty simple step. Um, get a stiff brush and a pot of water. Clean water is best because you're, you're going to use a lot of this. Now I'm using a Citadel dry brush for this, a large dry brush. And what I do is get the brush really wet and then just fully wet the side of the tank you're going to do first. And then let it let it settle for just, just a few seconds. Then start to scrape at it with the brush, almost like a stabby motion, downwards. As you can see, it comes away fairly easily. Um, what you're going to do next is start to be more aggressive with the brush all over the model. Like you'll change direction of the brush because that'll rub off the part you, you're going at. Because where the stuff is dried underneath, um, it takes more effort. If we'd given the worn effects fluid less drying time, and subsequently the, the coat of paint we put over the top of it less drying time, um, it'd be much easier to chip off and it'd fall away. Like, if you're going for a more aggressive, um, as I've said before, if you're going for a more aggressive weathering and more worn look, less drying time is the key. A few more coats of worn fluid and less drying time. But as you can see on, on the model I'm doing, I gave it an, enough drying time to just look like it had been battle worn. I, I didn't want it to look like it had been out in the field for days on end. I'll just speed this up now so you can see the final product. Do have plenty of like paper towels and things on hand to dry up because it can get a messy because obviously you're sluicing water about everywhere it, it's it's going to start running off. Dry it off with a paper towel and um, there you go, all done.
as you can see, it was a really easy technique, and you, your tank's pretty much tabletop ready. I mean, you've obviously got to do the little details and maybe a bit of shading, but it doesn't take any time. About half an hour for that tank, and that's including the, the base coat as well. Um, there's a few high-quality images for you. Just have a look. Easy as. Thanks, guys.